quiet in here. <laughs> hey, Will. Ready for me? Yeah. Let me see. I'd like to welcome everybody to uh, today's press conference. We'll begin with some opening remarks from Las Vegas Raiders owner Mark Davis. <clears throat> How's everybody doing today? It's kind of loud. Turn this down a bit. I feel. Um, as you all know, 2021 was quite a season for the Raiders. Um, ups and downs. But uh, in October, we got shook to the core when our head coach resigned. Uh, five games into the season. And at that time, we had to make a quick, quick decision on who was going to lead the Raider team that John and Mike Mayock had built for this season. And uh, after careful consideration, we chose Rich Passaccia, the special teams coach, number one, because we felt it would be le less distraction uh, than taking, uh, say, Gus Bradley from defense or maybe Tom Cable from offensive line. And uh, Despite the fact that we didn't get where we wanted to get to this year, and that's the Super Bowl this week, I'm so proud, and they should be so proud of the job that they did. Um, with all the uh, chaos, and I will call it chaos, going around the team, not only with the things that were going on off the field, but on the field as well, uh, COVID and everything else, um, they truly went the Raider way. And I'm just, I'm really so grateful to Rich Bisacci and the rest of the coaching staff for what they did. Um, when John resigned, we immediately went into another uh, aspect, and that was to start um, checking into who we thought might be coaching candidates and potentially GM candidates, if that were going to be the case, if we can go that way. And uh, we put together quite a list. And when the... Uh, Season ended, we decided we wouldn't start our process of interviewing until the, uh, champ the, the uh, playoffs were over for us. So once we finished our final game, we put together a, uh, a committee which consisted of Dan Ventrelli, Tom Delaney, myself, and a fellow by the name of Ken Harrock, who was actually the ringleader of this. And we had about... Uh, 12 people that we brought in. We initially started, the first person we interviewed was Rich Bisaccia. It was a five hour interview. It was fantastic, Rich was great. Um, then we went into doing uh, general managers. And uh, so we went through that process uh, with uh, Ken actually asking the questions, us listening, and then near the end of the, each interview, we would in interject our questions as well. We uh, think that the process was well done. It was extensive, exhaustive, and uh, today I'd like to introduce the new general manager of the Las Vegas Raiders from, uh, was it, uh, oh man, I'm losing it. Uh, that, which college? John Carroll. John Carroll University, and, and that's Dave Ziegler. And if Dave, Dave would come up, I'd appreciate it. And he, I, he does deserve a hand, guys. Welcome, Dave. Appreciate it. Um, what I'd like, like to do right now is just have Dave let you know a little bit about himself, and uh, we'll go from there. All right. Well, first, um, I want to thank everyone for being here today and taking time out of your day, those in the room and, and those uh, watching outside of the room. Um, First, I want to thank Mark and, and the committee um, that was involved in the hiring process. It was a very thorough process, um, a detailed process, and I know they interviewed a lot of quality candidates. Um, so it's really an honor for them to select me as the next general manager of the Las Vegas Raiders and to represent Raider Nation. Mark's passion for the Raiders, his commitment to my beliefs and what's important to me to, to, to make this um, organization a uh, cha championship caliber, caliber organization and his commitment to, um, to winning and his energy made this job highly desirable for me and my family. 
The stadium, the facilities, the weight room, the training room, the locker room, I could go on and on. Um, it, it, it really is, it harkens back to a phrase made famous by um, the late Al Davis. Um, there really is a commitment to excellence when you walk into this building and when you walk into this stadium. The, fra the phrase commitment to excellence resonates uh, with many of my core beliefs and a lot of the foundational pieces um, that will be important to building a championship culture here. We'll be an organization that lives in the details. No task will be too small. Every task will be measured with the same standard of excellence. We will hire excellent people that are driven by team and that are loyal to our cause. We will strive to have high-end communication at all levels of the organization, which takes effort and takes time to build. We'll be demanding, but never demeaning. We'll invest in the growth of our employees and have them reach their goals. The fabric of our culture will be to evaluate and evolve consistently and constantly our processes and our people to make sure that we are always operating at a championship level. Being committed to the standard of excellence is going to occur from the top down, and it's what, we'll take, it's what it will take to build this organization into an organization that consistently competes for championships. I would be remiss not to thank um, some people that helped me get here. Um, as Mark mentioned, um, I was, you know, attended John Carroll University, and, and I'll get to that. But first, I wouldn't be sitting here today if it wasn't for my wife, Carissa, and my kids, uh, Asher, Georgina, and Camden. Um, Carissa is the true GM of my family. Um, if you know me and you know us, you know that she handles everything. Um, she's extremely talented in her own right, and um, just a blessing to have in my life, and, and, and is really, um, again, is a, is a major part of, of me being here today. My mom and dad, my brother and sister, um, who are probably trying to watch online somewhere, um, their love and support um, has always been constant and has always driven me to succeed. And also my extended family, who taught me the value of a strong work ethic and doing the right thing. <clears throat> my in-laws, Ron and Anita, uh, also have been very supportive as, of, as we've bounced around from Denver and moved uh, multiple times over the, last, um, over the last 10 years. They've always been, been, our, been by our side and have always been um, supportive of our vision. Quickly, um, my family in Talmadge, Ohio, which, was, uh, which is where I was born and raised, I have a large support system in Talmadge. Um, that's where you learn, that's where I learn to compete every day. It's a, it's a small town, it's a sports crazed town, and it was, it was football, basketball, baseball. Um, that's what you did, that's what your identity was about, and, and that's where I really learned to compete. Um, two coaches I have to recognize quickly, um, my head high school coach, Jeff Ferguson, and uh, Randy Scava, who were two people that pushed me beyond limits that um, I thought I could push myself both physically many times, uh, mentally and emotionally, and they were big parts of who I am today. The John Carroll community, which runs deep in the NFL and runs deep in many coaching circles from college to high school, um, the high standards and the commitment to serving others is something that I learned there and is something that I take with me uh, every day when I come into work. I must thank the Patriot Organization, Robert, Jonathan Kraft, um, for their first class treatment of me and my family. Of course, Bill Belichick, uh, who has been a great teacher for, to me um, in all things football. And Nick Casario, who uh, I've known for a very long time, who brought me to New England, who taught me uh, many of the ins and outs of the scouting system that I believe in today. In closing, it is an honor to represent Raider Nation in this historic franchise. And there will be one focus from here going forward. And simply put, it will be to just win, baby. Thank you. Thank you. Um, before we get into questions and everything, there's somebody else I'd like to introduce. And that's the next head coach of the Las Vegas Raiders, 
from John Carroll University, <laughs> Mr. Josh McDaniel. Thank you to uh, everybody for being here uh, today and for those of us uh, that are not here and join us online, I appreciate you uh, uh, being here. Um, I'd like to begin uh, by thanking Mr. Davis, uh, Dan Ventrelli, um, the entire Raiders organization. Um, it's, it's been an incredible uh, experience for me the last three or four days here, uh, getting to, to know the people in the organization. Um, you know, it's, it's been a thorough process. They've been very candid. Um, I, I understand the vision uh, that, that they have in mind. Uh, that's been clear from the beginning, uh, what they're looking for. Um, seeing the stadium, the facility, uh, and again, every person that I've met thus far, uh, you can tell uh, where this organization is headed, uh, and I'm excited to be a part of it. Um, I'm also excited to partner with uh, Dave Ziegler, uh, who is not only a friend of mine, but uh, we go back a long way, and uh, uh, I have a great deal of respect for him, uh, his ability to, uh, to do the job that, that he's been hired to do here, uh, evaluate, lead our personnel and scouting department. Um, you know, he's a hard worker, tireless in his effort to, to do anything that he can to help the football team win, uh, and I'm excited to, to join uh, in our vision together. Um, I would also uh, like to thank the New England Patriots uh, organization uh, Robert, Jonathan Kraft, uh, Coach Belichick, um, 18 years, uh, I was very fortunate to learn and grow uh, in a world-class organization, a first-class uh, environment, um, learned so many things from them, um, feel fortunate that me and my family were able to go through that experience, um, and, and now uh, here I am today. Um, my family, uh, starting with Laura, uh, my wife, um, she's my biggest supporter. Uh, she's the rock and head coach of, of our crew back home. Um, my four kids, uh, Jack, Maddie, uh, Livy, and Nina, uh, who are excited to join Raider Nation. Um, uh, they're, they're obviously my biggest support system, uh, and they've, they've helped me uh, chase my dreams and goals uh, professionally, uh, and it, it would be impossible without their support. Uh, my mom and dad, um, that's why I'm in this profession today. My father was a uh, uh, head football coach, high school football coach. Um, he's a legend in Ohio. Uh, he didn't like me to say that, but uh, I would be remiss if I didn't talk about that. Um, you know, and I've been going to, to practices since I was four or five years old, and, um, and my mother's, uh, I tell her all the time, she's the, the best, uh, you know, mother of a, of a player when I was growing up that I could ask for. She knew what a three technique was. She knew what punt protection was. And, you know, so uh, we, we, we got an earful from her. Um, but their support uh, has been incredible uh, in my life and uh, certainly in my career. Um, I would be remiss if I didn't talk about the assistant coaches uh, that I've worked with, um, the players uh, that I've had the privilege to coach. Um, I know that uh, any advancement, personal advancement in this profession uh, is only as the result of the collective efforts of everybody else. Um, and certainly uh, they're the big reason why I'm sitting here today and uh, I thank them. Um, the last 10 to 12 years, uh, I've really had an opportunity to grow as a person, as a coach, as a man, um, and try to figure out, um, you know, after my experiences, uh, in Denver and, and St. Louis, um, who I am, uh, how I wanted to be defined uh, in my career, uh, what I wanted to represent, and how I would lead the next time if I, if I got another opportunity uh, to be a head coach. And I've, I've, you know, it's crystallized for me. I'm clear in the vision that I have uh, for this role, for this job, for this team, um, and I'm going to be myself. Uh, and I think that's really important uh, for me um, and, and our organization as we go forward. Um, I'm the son of a football coach, and uh, I, you know, I don't apologize for that. I knew I wanted to do this uh, since I was four or five years old, and um, I love everything about this game. I love the practices, I love the weight room, I love the film study, 
Um, I love the winning and losing, even though nobody wants to lose. Uh, that's how you get better in this game. Um, and all the challenges that are presented in terms of trying to reach your ultimate goal in this profession, uh, all of those things are uh, part of the process. And if you didn't love a part of that process, uh, it, would, it would be a problem. And I love to work hard. I'm gonna be committed to the cause, which has been made very clear to me. I know it's clear to Dave. Um, I value character, hard work, loyalty. Um, those are really important things to me. Um, and I also think that it's really important as I've grown uh, and understand now how important it is to evolve, uh, to innovate, uh, to do new things, to try to figure out new ways uh, for us to uh, continue to try to be the best. Um, a wise man once told me that when you're young, you try to accumulate and advance. And when you get older, uh, you figure out that it's a lot more about serving and impacting others. And I think I've gone through both phases. And I learned a lot through my experiences. And now I'm excited to have that opportunity uh, to consistently impact other people. And I'm competitive. Um, and everything that I, that I do and I'm involved in, I want to compete to try to be the best we can, we can be. Um, I think we'll, uh, our team will show that uh, day in and day out. I think that's the best way for us to reach our, our, our potential uh, is to compete in, in every aspect of, of our organization. Um, the mission here, uh, Mr. Davis has made it very clear to me. Um, we're committed to doing whatever it takes uh, to win on and off the field. It's very important for us uh, to be a pillar in the community, uh, to do the right thing, to represent uh, this organization, Raider Nation, uh, the city of Las Vegas with class and integrity, uh, and we'll do that. Um, we're going to build a culture that is sustained <clears throat> by high character people uh, that work hard uh, to meet that championship standard in every area. Um, we want a tough, smart football team that's explosive, um, that's important, <laughs> uh, that, can, that can adapt that can adapt in today's NFL. I think that's really important. Um, you can't beat uh, every team the same way, and, and we're going to need to be adaptable. Um, I, I, you know, uh, the, the organization itself has, has, like I said, made such an impression on me in such a short time, and we're going to represent that organization the right way. Um, there'll be one rope, and from Mr. Davis on down, we're going to pull it in the same direction. And we have one goal, and if we're all pulling in the same direction, uh, we can accomplish a lot of great things. Uh, there will be a million moments um, that contribute to the success of this organization, and uh, this will, will be the first one. Um, to our players and fans, uh, we're committed uh, in our pursuit of excellence. Whatever we have to do uh, to achieve our goals, uh, we're going to put our head down. We're going to work hard. Uh, we're going to put great people uh, in this building in every area. Uh, we're going to do what it takes uh, for us to achieve um, you know, that vision. Um, and in closing, um, you know, I've, I've, I feel blessed uh, to, the, to the people that have impacted me along the way, uh, starting with my mom and dad, uh, my family uh, have played such an important role in me being here today. Um, I've been patient. I've been selective, um, maybe to a fault sometimes. Uh, people wanted me to do things uh, a little earlier than maybe I did them. Um, but it was going to take a special place uh, for me to, uh, to really leave where I was. And I found that here uh, in Las Vegas. And, uh, you know, I, I thank Mr. Davis again for having the faith uh, in me to, to lead this team as the head coach. Uh, and I know that the greatness of the Raiders is in its future. And I can't wait to get started. So. Great. Thanks. Thank you. Before, before, before we get to questions, I just want to say one thing. When I met Josh on Saturday, um, we, we met in the hallway as we were passing. It was before the uh, interview process was going to start. And uh, I said, hey, I introduced myself and everything. And he said, he looked me in the eye and he said, there's one thing. It was a fumble. <laughs> so Raider Nation, if you're worried, he's already come over to the dark side. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, with that, True we'll, story. <laughs> we'll open it up for questions. We have microphones on either aisle. Please state your name and affiliation. Go ahead, Vinny. Vinny Bonsignor with Las Vegas Review Journal. This is for Josh and uh, Dave. Um, you mentioned that you were patient, and uh, there have been reports that over the years there have been overtures made you know, for you and to be head co coaches elsewhere. Um, what was it about this organization that made you say, okay, this is the one that I want to leave New England for? 
Yeah. Um, well, the, I mean, when you when you go through this process, um, I w like I said, I was very impressed with how exhaustive they were, um, just in their evaluation um, of me um, and my fit and how I would fit into their vision. Um, and then you come out and you spend time with them, you meet the people, uh, you see that everything's done in a first class manner. Um, their commitment to winning is easy to feel, to see. Um, and to me, walking through this building and having a sense of the history and tradition of this organization and how much that impacts, um, you know, the day to day here, um, it really hit me. Um, this is one of those iconic places and it's a historic organization um, that has unbelievable history and tradition, um, you know, and it's in every hallway. And so I just, you know, getting to know them, feeling their commitment and understanding that that, that really married up with what my vision uh, would be for another opportunity, uh, it was easy to make the choice. Hey everyone, it's Tashawn Reed from The Athletic. Um, this is a, just an open question. Um, when it comes to personnel and, and roster construction, what's sort of the, the vision for how the decision-making process will, will, will happen between whether it's you know McDaniels or Rosigler? It, just to clarify, in terms of how we're going to make decisions? Yes, yeah, in terms of just like transactional, drafting, uh, roster construction, how's that sure. decision-making process? Sure. Well, I mean, at the end of the day, as the, as the general manager and, and, and as the, the one leading the charge on the, on the scouting side and personnel and college and pro, um, you know, the, that direction will come from me um, in terms of, you know, the construction of the roster. Obviously, we're um, – Josh and I are, are – um, tied in, in, in many ways in, in our vision of how to build a team and, and, and our vision of what we want um, in terms of the players that we bring into the building is, is very is very connected. Um, but at the end of the day, when it's time to make decisions um, at, on personnel, while we'll work together, you know, those final decisions will be, be made by me. Ed Graney, Review Journal. Mark, uh, I'll give Vinny's question to you now about you talked about the process. Can you talk about when you came down to the decision of the two gentlemen you're sitting by, what stood out to you that made this decision for you? Well, you know, I'd been watching Josh for, for many years for certain reasons other than maybe good ones at times. Um, <laughs> the, the success of the uh, Patriots and watching them over the years, um, I've seen them do it with Tom Brady, of course, the greatest of all time, but I also saw the development of Tom Brady, the greatest of all time. And then I saw it with Matt Castle. I saw him be able to win with him and make Matt Castle the hottest free agent commodity in the market. Then I saw him do it uh, this year with a rookie quarterback. I've just always seen the Patriots as a team that not only adapts from week to week or half to half, but maybe even series to series. Um, I just believe in Josh's uh, ability to assess the situation and make the changes in real time. And that's always been something that's impressed me. On the, on the, uh, the side of Dave, with their personnel and everything, it's a lot of no names that they do it with. And every now and then, you know, they'll bring in a, a big name free agent, but he fits a spot. And that kind of reminded me of the old Raiders in that way, that we used to be able to do that. And I tease him because uh, they, they took a player from us, a guy by the name of Randy Moss, <laughs> And I told him, you got Randy Moss, and you couldn't even win with him. <laughs> and, and the funny part about that is they won 18 games, but they lost one. <laughs> but um, I really just, you know, again, in watching it and being around this, this, this sport for a long time and watching the excellence that, that was brought to the, to, to the field by the Patriot organization and knowing that Josh was a huge part of that and talking to people that are also part of the Patriot organization that I know in my network of people, I got the feeling that this was the right guy. Josh Hondo Carpenter with Sports Illustrated. Yep. Most coaches, when they take over a, a team, it's in disaster mode. You get a double-digit fifth seed in the AFC West, yep. but you also get a top-five quarterback. How appealing was it for you to come to an organization with a quarterback like Derek Carr? Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> Derek's won a lot of games in this league, and we've played against, uh, we've competed against each other a number of times, and. I have a lot of respect for him. Uh, he certainly uh, did a good job this year uh, leading their offense. And, um, you know, I spoke with him yesterday. We had a great conversation. Looking forward to actually getting to meet him and get to know him as a person, as a human being, uh, and then getting to work, you know, uh, in terms of 
developing our offense this year into what it's going to be. But there's no question that um, we have the capacity and capability of winning uh, with Derek here. Uh, we all know that. And I look forward to the challenge of trying to grow uh, not only Derek, but you know everybody on the roster to try to reach our potential. I never feel like a player um, you know, is a finished product. And our job as coaches is to continue to identify places where we might be able to get better and work hard uh, to try to improve. And I know he's completely on board with that. Again, we had a great conversation, and, and I look forward to, to, to our relationship. Uh, this is uh, Chris Matthews from KLAS-TV here in Vegas. Can I just ask both of you, Dave and, and Josh, what are the key, what are maybe a couple of the key principles? You mentioned you're tied in many ways. Maybe a couple of the key principles that you bring from New England to Las Vegas with, with yourselves? Well, I, I would say uh, some of the things that I hit on um, earlier when, when during my introduction are, are really some of the key principles in terms of, um, you know, and I would say more like foundationally within the organization in terms of, you know, the attention to detail, the ter in terms of a high standard in, in, in everything that we do. Um, and, t and also, um, I'd say communication and collaboration and, and roster building um, together. Um, and, and, and I think those are, you know, those are some key elements um, that are, are really important to our process. You know, when it comes to players specifically, um, you know, we always, we, we always talk about it and it really is important and it's simple, but smart, tough, dependable, and players that love football. And, you know, obviously there's a lot of different elements that, that you can um, also keep on top of that. But at the very core, um, those, are some, those are the things that we're going to look at. Those are the things that are important to us. And those are some really foundational pieces for um, us when we look at this, you know, this organization and building it uh, how, we want, how we want it to look. It's, <clears throat> I mean, they've said it perfectly. And, and it's hard to have a tough, smart football team uh, that's explosive, that plays well under pressure, unless you're committed in every avenue of those are the type of people we're going to bring in and put on the team. And so it requires discipline to do that, um, you know, and, and, and that's our vision for how we feel uh, best about trying to win, um, you know, and, and you're going to have to, uh, there's, there's a lot of commitment across the board in our organization uh, to being able to, to, to field a team that represents those qualities and those characteristics. And I would just add, um, before we move on, that, that when you're building a team, it's not just about acquiring talent. It's about acquiring talent and putting talent in the, in the, right, in the right spots, but it's also um, about uh, building a roster from top to bottom that is competitive, that competes every day, that has depth. Um, and, and, and those are also key elements that I think we've learned um, through our time in the league that really allows you to um, sustain and win um, during a long NFL season and, and having the right people in the right spots in the right roles. And we're very role specific in how we look at things, um, you know, are a couple other key elements to, to what we believe in and, and how we're going to build it. Uh, Levi Edwards, Raiders.com. This is kind of a two-parter. Uh, first, Coach McDaniels, uh, you talked about how much you've evolved over time. If you could put uh, a point on an aspect of your life just on or off the field as a coach from your time in Denver, where would you say is probably the biggest thing that you've involved as yep. just personally and also for you, Dave? Uh, how convenient is it to be able to work with a head coach as a general manager, someone that you are so familiar with building a team? Yeah. Yeah. Um. You know, <clears throat> when I went to Denver, um, you know, I, I, I knew a little bit of football. Um, I, didn't, I didn't really know people uh, and how important that aspect um, of, of this process and maintaining the culture and building the team uh, was. And, um, and, I, and I failed and I didn't, you know, I didn't succeed at it. And so um, looking at that experience has been one of the best uh, things uh, in my life in terms of my overall growth as a, as a person, as a coach. What do I need to do different? How do I need to handle my role if I have another opportunity uh, and do better at it? And I feel like that's really a, an area that I've tried to grow in with our staff um, in New England. Um, you know, our offensive staff working together, collaborating, supporting one another, uh, impacting them, serving them, helping them grow as coaches, as players, uh, with our with our with our guys, uh, you know that we're coaching. So 
um, that's the biggest, I would say that's the biggest area for me. Uh, and I know how important it is as a head coach to be able to do that. Uh, this is a Vic Tafer from The Athletic, a question for both Josh and Dave. Um, in what ways did Bill Belichick shape you guys? What was the biggest impact he had as far as your guys' development to get to this point uh, today? <laughs> I'll go. I'll let you take that first. <laughs> um, oh, boy. There's a, there's a, long, that's a long list. Um, look, he's... He's been, I'm, 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 as I mentioned, I'm blessed and fortunate to have had the experiences that I have. Um, I started in personnel, you know, back in 2001 when Laura made quite, quite a bit more money than, than I was making. And, um, and, and just he, he made you develop in every area as a, as a professional in this environment and gave us the opportunity to see the scouting side, gave us the opportunity uh, to work on, de I had the opportunity to work on defense, you know, then flipped me over to the offensive side and, and had me, uh, you know, coach the quarterback and, and kind of, I saw the game, you know, in a lot of different perspectives and I was able to, in, you know, what I felt like was that's a really well-rounded approach um, as you're growing up in this game to have some understanding of what is the grading system, what does it mean, um, how do they attack us on offense when you're on defense and then flip, flipping it over to the offensive side and, and understanding that and then, you know, tying it all together with situational football and game management, um, which is obviously a critical component to winning every game in the NFL. I mean, you, you lose a lot more games than you win uh, in this league, and if you can do some of those things really well, obviously that's going to impact your opportunity to win. So um, there's so many that I, I couldn't name them all, but, I mean, uh, you know, he just he gave me an opportunity to be well-rounded coming out of the organization, uh, and I'm very grateful for that. You know, I'd say for me, I, and I could you know list a, have a, a laundry list of things, but I would say you know the one thing that that sticks out to me is um, that that Bill taught me is is Bill is a forward thinker, and it's not just about a decision in the moment; it's about how a decision can. Um, you know, one decision can impact four different things. One decision can impact what we're going to do um, in 2022, in 2023, and just to really have a, an understanding of um, how decisions can can impact different parts of the organization and can impact your team. And I, and I think the other thing that um, you know, Bill doesn't build it doesn't get talked about much, but um, and it goes along with the forward thinking piece is. We are a bill is bill is, um, you know, uh, really dedicated to evaluating every single thing that we do at, at every point of the year and looking at it critically and then evolving and trying to figure out how are we going to get these things better, even if the end result was a Super Bowl or even if the end result was a great trade or a great player acquisition or, you know, whatever it may be. Um, Every decision that we do here in all of our processes, as I mentioned, um, just to evaluate those things critically, what went well, what didn't go well, and how we can improve it. And, and I think that's critical um, to not staying stagnant and to, um, you know, always kind of making sure you're moving forward, moving forward with the, uh, you know, the best ideas and the best processes. Sam Gordon, Las Vegas Review Journal, um, right here. Gentlemen, welcome to Vegas. Dave, question for you. Um, like Hondo mentioned, this was a team that went 10-7 and seven last year and made the playoffs. When you assess the roster, how close do you feel like it is to, to contending with some of the teams we saw this past weekend? And are there any particular points of emphasis as you get ready for your first um, draft and free agency with the Raiders? Yeah, I, I think, um, you know, obviously this, the, the team um, did a good job. Right, they got into the playoffs, and um, there's a lot of talented players on this team. Um, and I and I think you know Josh and I have talked about it. There's still a lot of you know I've evaluated the you know I've evaluated the team to a degree um, to the detail that 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 I would normally do. I'm not there yet. Um, so I think to to be fair to be fair to the team and, and to the guys onto the team, I think you know there's still a, a self scout and an evaluation period that that I have to go through um, with our staff here with Josh to really understand how all the pieces and the parts fit together. And I think you know once we go through that process and once we have that understanding, um, you know we'll have a much better idea of, of what our plan of attack is going to be going forward. Um, not that I'm going to announce that to the world, um, but but we'll but we'll have that plan and, and we'll have that um, a concrete idea of what that is, and I think you know that's still going to take some time. 
I have another question for Dave. Um, obviously, you have a, a scouting background, but you've worked a variety of, of jobs, you know, between your time with the Broncos and the Patriots. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you think you, you learned from wearing all those different hats, and how do you think that can help you now that you're stepping into this GM role? Yeah, well, it's, you know, it's, it's been a great experience in just terms of um, being well-rounded, and I would say even beyond football. Um, you know, me and Mark talked about it. You know, I, I was um, a high school teacher at one time, and I was a high school guidance counselor at one time. And I'd say all those experiences in terms of um, how, to deal with, how to deal with different people, how to relate to different people, how to communicate at a high level, how to show empathy, uh, how to problem solve. Like, I learned a lot of those lessons um, outside of football and that, that have been really valuable to me. And then in, inside of football, um, you know, yes, yeah, starting with uh, my time in Denver um, as a pro scout, as a college scout, as a scouting assistant, picking people up from the airport, um, you know, to putting cards on the board. Um, and my time in, in, in New England, um, again, on the college side and the pro side. And, and um, this year, I would say this past year, really being much more hands-on on, on a lot of aspects of the organization, uh, being involved more on some of the contractual things that are involved in, in the organization, the salary cap and those types of things. So I just think like the more exposure you have right in any line of work, um, you, you know, the more, um, the more knowledge you have and the more knowledge that you, you, that you have, um, the better that you can perform your job. And so, yeah, all of those experiences have allowed me just, I, I would say, to feel confident um, in my ability to, to run the scouting department. And, and, and I'll still have things to learn and I'll learn things from the people that are here in this organization um, and ideas that they have and processes that they have um, that maybe are better than some of the ideas that, that I have myself. And, and so um, that's how I would answer those questions. It's been, um, I think it's, it's been a unique ride for me to get to this point. Um, but I think it all it, it all kind of came together um, to allow to allow me to um, have the, some of the success that I've had. Dave, along the lines of um, <clears throat> evaluation and assessing the roster, um, Derek Carr has said that he would like to retire as a Raider. He wants to be here a long time. He's got one more year left on his contract. Is that a box you, that you feel needs to get checked off ASAP, or does it go into next year? Or, you know, what are your thought processes on that? Yeah, I, th I think like, and, and, and I know Josh talked to Derek. I had a great conversation with Derek myself yesterday. And, you know, I think the one thing that, that um, you know, we all understand is, is there's going to be a process of us learning Derek, Derek learning us, um, and, and fitting all those pieces together. And I think that's going to be step one is building the relationship, understanding um, what Derek does well, um, Derek understanding what, what Josh and the offensive staff is trying to build. And I think as that collaboration goes, um, you know, we'll, we'll, that, then you kind of see how everything fits together. And I think until you see how everything, you know, you have to see how everything fits together and, and kind of work from that point. And, and we're just really excited to um, have Derek here and, and to get to know him and, and get to know his strengths and um, get to work with him in our system. Hey there, Cassie Soto with the Las Vegas Review Journal. This one is for Mark. How important was it for you to find a duo who had previously worked together, had experience of how each other operate uh, at the beginning of this search? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, when I first came in, uh, the first hire I did was uh, Reggie McKenzie as the general manager of the Raiders. And uh, it was important to me because we really hadn't had a general manager since my father had been running the team. And uh, I gave Reggie the ability to bring in his own head coach, which was the ability to have uh, some type of uh, working relationship. And uh, that didn't work out so well at that time. I think it was because they were two young, young guys that were working together, but they really didn't have the experience to run a football team. Uh, then we, we come to the next, the next iteration was John and, and Mike Mayock. And uh, they built the roster that's here today, but it was a rocky road. And uh, so I felt in this, in this time, we were going to do it a little bit differently and try to find a teammate. And therefore, in every interview that we did with a head coach, we asked him who he would think of as a general manager or general managers. And on the other side of the coin, we asked that to every general manager as well. Who would you think of as a head coach? And uh, it was such an expanding learning process, hearing about all those things, but it, we felt that it was really important for them to have synergy. And uh, I couldn't have found a better pair of people working together from Chong Carroll University than these two gentlemen. <laughs>
We have time for just a few more guys. We'll go Adam, Hondo, and then Paul. Yeah, Adam Hill, Las Vegas Review Journal. Along those same lines for both Dave and Josh, how important was it for you guys to find a place where you could work together, kind of put your, your stamp on a franchise and, and kind of put that vision into place of how you guys have kind of seen this over the, over the years? I think it's a, you know, I think it's an important aspect of the team building process. Um, it's not a, you know, it's not something that has to be, uh, you know, a long-term relationship. I mean, we've seen that work in the NFL uh, where it, it hasn't been. But I just, to me, it was important for me to have that, uh, you know, a, as somebody, have that person be somebody that I was familiar with um, that understands, you know, me as a, a person, as a coach, uh, and, and just fortunate that this opportunity is presented to us. I mean, you know, we don't uh, have to teach one another the language, the scouting system, um, you know, the things we're looking for in a player, the qualities and traits that we covet, um, those are kind of, we already understand those. And so I think, you know, albeit not necessarily a prerequisite, uh, I think it's a huge plus for us and for our organization that we have that opportunity to kind of hit the ground running. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think that, um, you know, the, the, I would say the unique thing for, is it important? Like Josh said, I don't think it's a prerequisite, but, but there are some advantages to it. And I think, you know, Josh and I's relationship goes back um, a long time, and, and our relationship has always been built on honesty and respect um, and the, the ability to be each other's biggest teammate um, and, and the ability to, to be each other's critic, too and to um, always come back to a place of respect and always come back to a place where we're on the same page. And I think that's, um, you know, been a, 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 the real beauty of our relationship as, as we've, um, you know, developed and as we've kind of advanced in the, you know, in our, in our, in our respective positions in the league. Josh, for you, please, is it your anticipation that you'll run a 4-3, a 3-4 on defense? What is it that you're comfortable with as the head yeah. coach? Uh, you know, most of it, it's funny, most of it today is actually built out of the nickel anyway. You know, we, we talk a lot about 4 3, three four. You know, 85% of the game is now sub defense. And so your, your, you know, your decision making process might be a little different than it was 15 years ago when you were playing a lot more base defense. Um, so uh, this team is, was built in the, the 4 3 mold. Um, We'll make those uh, considerations and you know determine how we want to go forward here uh, as we kind of build the staff and you know and, and move along with the with the team. But I, I think right now it's built in that mode. But you know, like I said, most of these games you're playing a four-man line and nickel defense anyway, and so that's almost become your base. Um, and so the vision for us is going to need to be, you know, what are our five? There's five starting defensive backs now, and there's you know, there's two linebackers and, and so on and so forth. So, um, you know, we'll, we'll do the, the, the due diligence as we, as we hire our staff and then evaluate our team and decide what's best uh, as we move forward. Mark, Paul, Paul Gutierrez here from ESPN. You, in the decade plus since you've been running things, you've, you've overseen a deconstruction, then the reconstruction. How would you describe what this is right now, just totally going outside of the box? And like you mentioned earlier, finding the, the synergy, but going outside of the box as well? Well, I, I think that John and Mike had built a uh, foundation to build upon, and I think that's what we're doing now, and I think moving forward, that's what these two are going to be building upon, that foundation. Uh, we've got some great players in this organization right now. Um, I believe there's a great culture in this organization right now, which is what they will find. They haven't seen that as much yet because they haven't seen all the players together, but that's something that Rich had built uh, over the last six months is a fantastic culture in this building and uh, I think that uh, it's just now we're just moving to the next level and that it's not a rebuild it's not a reload it's just taking this to the next level and uh, getting to that Super Bowl and winning some championships all right thank you everyone that concludes our press conference if the network TV affiliates want to come down for quick one-on-ones uh, please come to the front of the stage and uh, we'll get you guys taken care of thank you appreciate thank you, you. Yes, sir. Appreciate you. Yes, sir. Awesome. welcome